Welcome to our Bridgepoint online experience. Whether this is your first time with Bridgepoint or you're part of our family, we'd love to get to know you better. So if you follow the link to our online connection card, you can tell us a little bit more about yourself and how we can pray for you. We hope you enjoy our time together as we prepare our hearts to worship Jesus.
Hey, I'm Eric Ashley, lead pastor here at Bridgepoint Church. Uh, week in and week out, I have the privilege of working with an incredible group of people uh, that lead the various ministries here at the church. And as we were thinking back about how to uh, kind of put a cap on the end of this year, I asked each of them to, to share just for a moment of something that's impacted them personally or a way that they've seen God working in the church. And so you're about to hear from, from each of them and I hope that you enjoy the things they have to say and be able to engage with it yourself. Of the many exciting things that happened this year at Bridgepoint, there are two things that stand out to me in general. First off, we saw new life groups emerge, branching off of the roots of pre-existing life groups. Second, we were able to successfully initiate online giving as a new way for our people to invest in the kingdom. Both of those things are significant to me because it shows that our congregation is willing to do things that are outside of their comfort zone in order to follow God's calling in their lives. It's been an exciting year at Bridgepoint, and I'm looking forward to see what God has in store for us in 2014. 2013 has been a great year at Bridgepoint. Uh, many, many exciting things have happened for uh, for our church, for me personally. There have been so many hundreds of things that have impacted my life. Um, one of the biggest things, though, would absolutely have been getting the opportunity to lead the trip to Uganda. Um, what an awesome, awesome place to be. And it was just really cool to watch the, the team that went, the small team that went from Bridgepoint to get, get connected with the people there and to get to watch them catch a heart for connecting people to Jesus that are uh, thousands and thousands of miles away from here. It was an awesome thing to watch. And just a few of the things that happened on that trip um, really made it even more than just a, a catching the vision kind of a trip. Uh, we got to see hundreds of people come to faith in Jesus. We taught hundreds of children uh, the story of creation and the gospel which was really great. Um, we also had the opportunity to teach some pastors and church leaders uh, through part of the book of Mark, which was a great experience, as well as uh, we had the opportunity in one of the last days that we went, um, we went to a village called Makakuba, which had very little connection to anyone and has no church, has uh, only a preschool to help support them. And um, as, a, as a group, we really felt like the, the Lord was calling us to do some more to help, the, to help that village in Uganda. And so it's exciting to see how God's gonna to, to further that vision. He's going to use that in the next year to, for us to, uh, to go back over there in August and be able to continue watching God do awesome stuff through Bridgepoint Church around the world. So I'm just excited about the heart that Bridgepoint Church has for uh, the peoples of the world. It's awesome. 2013 was such an exciting year for me personally, um, but also for Kid Point. We were able to see the amount of children on Sunday mornings double um, from the beginning of the year. And that means that the impact that we have for Jesus and sharing the gospel, teaching them the word of God, um, has reached the, the, twice as many kids this year. And, um, and during this year, we've seen so many children place their faith in Jesus and then follow through and get baptized. And you as a congregation have been able to um, be a part of that and see that happen. Um, my heart and my prayer for this coming up year in 2014 is that you as a congregation would continue to invest in this ministry, continue to invest in the families and the children and pray for them. Pray that God would use um, us and Kid Point, the volunteers and the leadership there um, to, to teach them um, Christ-focused um, material on Sunday mornings, that we would see children growing in their faith and more and more children coming to faith in Jesus. We truly believe that the best is yet to come, and we know that for 2014 that Jesus is going to do that. A standout for me at Bridgepoint Church in 2013 had to do with the series, I Am Generous. Um, before that series, I don't think I had fully grasped the impact of our financial choices on how we follow Jesus. Uh, it's really true that when Jesus says in Matthew 6 that we only serve one master. There's God and there's money. We're going to love one, pick one. We're going to love that one and then we're going to hate the other. We can't serve both. 
Um, and as part of that series, God really spoke to my heart about the reality of how enslaved we become to our possessions and how that enslavement keeps us from really fully following Jesus. The teaching, the tools that we got as a part of that series really, really began to make an impact on even me personally as I sought to uh, tighten up my own stewardship of my finances and honor God more with that. And I really saw that happening in the lives of others at Bridgepoint, uh, the hearts and the lives of people in my life group, and then just really a, uh, as a part of the church in, um, in general. And that really makes me excited for 2013 because I know that people are going to be becoming more free, free to follow Jesus, free to honor Jesus more, and free to worship Jesus more with all aspects of their life, but more, most importantly, or more specifically, this, uh, this aspect of following Jesus with financial decisions and becoming a church that really is generous for the glory of God in 2014. Man, 2013 at Bridgepoint, what an incredible thing to be a part of. Uh, what, what I see in Bridgepoint that I love so much is not just in 2013, but just our heart as a whole of reaching people that are not being reached. Uh, that That is a, a factor of Bridgepoint that I, I, I couldn't get away of. That That is definitely what attracts me most about this church, and it's incredible. From things like the fact that we write our own curriculum in KidPoint, that's kind of unheard of for a church um, at the level that we are, and it's incredible because it's working for the kids that we have coming. Um, another thing, our student ministry is getting started, and we specifically found a building to work for our students because that's what we have a heart for is reaching people, and, and we're making that happen. And you can just look at the people that make up our congregation and see that, that we're reaching people that have not been, been met, that have not been reached in other ways, and it's just been an incredible thing to see happen and to be a part of. I've got numerous accounts of just a lot of my friends at Bridgepoint um, that, that have been reached that are because of the way that we do ministry and knowing that it's about the gospel, it's about the truth of Jesus and getting it to people that need to hear it, which is everybody. So the way that Bridgepoint reaches people that have not been reached in other ways in Gloucester is definitely what's most important to me coming out of 2013 and gets me most excited about 2014 because I know that that's where our heart is and it's just going to continue. Darkness, no sin. 
Hey, Bridge Point, this is going to be the very last message that you hear from 2013. And so I wanted to do something a little bit, a little bit unique. Uh, a big part of my, my calling as your, as your lead pastor is to be able to teach and preach God's word to you. And so we put a lot of time and energy in praying through and seeking God about what we're going to teach you from, from God's word. It's a, it's a vast book. It's all inspired by him. It's all profitable. But what I wanted to do is to take a look back over 2013 at all the different sermon series that we did and, and just pull out something that stuck out to me, the, the big idea, a truth that, that we were really focusing in on as a church for a while. And the reason I think this is important to do is the scripture talks about really two, two aspects of when we hear God's word. The first part is actually hearing God's word, whether, you are, um, whether you're sitting in a sermon, whether you're in a, a life group discussing the message, whether you're just in a personal conversation, there's all kinds of ways that we engage with God's word throughout the year. But it also talks about applying God's word, not just simply hearing God's word, but uh, but living it out. And I want to read you just a couple of scriptures before we, we take this track back down memory lane of 2013 of, of what does God's word say about the importance of not only hearing the word, but also living out the word. So I would just give you a couple of scriptures. The first one comes from 3 John. 3 John, and starting in verse 2, it says this. It says, Dear friend, I pray that you prosper in every way and be in good health, physically just as you are spiritually. For I was very glad to hear when some brothers came and they testified to your faithfulness to the truth and how you are walking in the truth. I have no greater joy than this to hear my children are walking in the truth. As your pastor, I, I've got to tell you that there's no greater joy for me than to hear that you are walking in the truth. When, when God has spoken to you and you in obedience choose to live out the truths that he's, that he's told you. That's so important because when God plants those truths in our heart, he doesn't just, just speak them to us so that we can hear them and forget, but so that our lives can be radically changed so that we can be transformed to become more and more like Jesus. Jesus. Uh, two other passages that just, just come to my mind. 1 Peter 1, 24 through 25 says this. It says, The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. When we hear truths from God, it's meant to be in our hearts to last forever, to change us, not just in this life, but the life to come. And one final verse, just to, to get our hearts and minds where we're going today, is James 1, 22 and then verse 25, James instructs us, he encourages us, he says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves, do what it says. 
See, it's, it's actually not good for us to, to simply hear God's word, but then choose to do nothing with it. That, that really has no benefit for us. And so, um, you know, I've had the privilege to preach a whole lot of messages, and many of you have been able to listen to a whole lot of messages. But for both of us, unless we actually apply that to, to our lives, it's not, it's not any lasting benefit. But when we do apply it, this is what James says happens. It says, whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they've heard, but doing it, it says they will be blessed in what they do. I hope that your uh, 2013 has been a year that has been blessed as you have uh, made steps of obedience to God, as you've actually walked in the truth, as you've had God's word implanted into your heart. And maybe, maybe you're new to Bridgepoint. Maybe you just came um, this month. And so you haven't had the privilege of hearing all the messages from the last year. Or maybe you've been with us for the whole year and you've heard every series. Uh, maybe you're the person that's heard all 52 messages that, have, have been, that will have been preached. That's amazing. Congratulations. Uh, keep it up. We hope that that will be true for everybody this next year. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at the major series that we did this year, and we're going to talk about that big truth. And what I, what I hope that you'll do is ask yourself this. Maybe as we, as we talk about uh, certain passages, certain big ideas, it will remind you of something that God spoke to you. And ask yourself the question, how have I done at walking in the truth? How have I done in 2013 at actually putting into practice the things that I've learned, whether um, it came through um, a, a sermon or whether it came through our, our life group discussions? And just as a shameless plug, when we come back into 2014, I hope that you'll plan to get plugged into a group and, and, and be ready to engage with God's Word because we're supposed to learn within, within community. And you'll have the opportunity to do that. Maybe you didn't make that a priority in 2013, but I hope that you will in 2014. I know that Pastor Brian would love to, to, uh, to see our whole church, every single person to be involved in some kind of group. So um, I, I, let me encourage you to do something. If you need to, to put this on pause just for a moment, would you grab a piece of paper? Um, would you make sure that you've got your Bible so that if anything that said it just, you know, it's like, wow, that I really want to think more about that. Uh, or, I remember God teaching me that truth. You can jot it down and and maybe go back and read over those scriptures, or maybe even go back to our sermon audio and listen to the message that it came from. So if you need to put it on pause to get your paper, to get your Bible, whatever you need to get settled, um, we'll give you just a moment to be able to do that. And then we're gonna come back and jump right in. Well, in 2013, we started off with a series called Greater. The big idea was to, to dream bigger, start smaller, and ignite God's vision for your life. And the main verse that, that really set the tone for that scripture came out of, out of John chapter 14, verse 12. It says this, Jesus is speaking. He says, I assure you, the one who believes in me will do the works that I do. This is pause right there. That was an amazing claim from Jesus. Jesus did amazing things. People's lives were, were changed by Jesus in incredible ways. He was healing people. He was speaking the truth. Uh, people were being saved from their sins. But Jesus says, the one who believes in me will do the works that I do, and he will do even greater works than these because I'm going to the Father. Uh, the big truth that we learned in, in the series Greater was about how when we choose to follow Jesus and then he, he gives us his Holy Spirit to guide us, we are able to, to do great things for him and for his kingdom. I, I'm, I'm curious for you, what, what great things have you seen God do in your life and through your life? Uh, maybe this is just a moment just to, just to stop and to say, you know, God, thank you. Thank you for, for giving me your Holy Spirit. Thank you for, for choosing to work through me as broken as I, as I am, uh, just like he chose to work through, through the disciples. I hope that as you look back, you can say that this year has been a greater year, that you've seen God um, birth his vision into your life and that you've been able to take those small steps so that you can make an impact um, for, for those around you. Well, after we finished up the series Greater, uh, we jumped into what was actually one of my favorite series during the year. It was called Fast Forward. It was about moving closer to God through fasting and through through prayer. Uh, I heard from a lot of people within our church that 
the teaching on fasting and prayer was something was something unique. Yeah, we had a lot of questions about why do we why what's the necessity of of prayer? What's the necessity of fasting? And we not only learned uh, Jesus' teaching about when he taught us to pray, "Our Father in heaven, let your name be holy," uh, and asking for his kingdom to come, his will be done. But we also learned the the why. Why is that so important? The scripture that set the tone for this whole series was Mark chapter 9, verse 29. And the scenario had happened is that Jesus had been away from some of his disciples and they had encountered a circumstance in which uh, they, they couldn't bring about any change. And they were really frustrated and they wondered, they were like, you know, Jesus, why couldn't we, why couldn't we do this? Why didn't we meet spiritual success in this occasion? And, and Jesus makes this really startling statement. He says, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. The big idea here is that there are some spiritual breakthroughs in our life that we're not going to see accomplished except when we choose to humble ourselves and seek God. When we choose to, to seek after him and say, God, I can't do this on my own. I need you. And that's what happens when we, when we fast. We're saying, God, I hunger for you more than anything. And Jesus says there's some spiritual breakthroughs that just aren't going to happen apart from prayer and fasting. So, so ask yourself, how has this year been for you when it comes to prayer and fasting? Have you seen a greater hunger for God? Have you been more likely to bring your cares to Him? And, and if that's not the case, how would you like to see that happen in 2014 to, to increase your, your engagement with God through fasting and prayer? The third series that we came to, this was, we were actually kicking this off at Easter. It was a series called New. Um, you know, a lot of people look for change in, in their life and they try to uh, engage and find change uh, through a lot of different ways. But what we learned is that the only kind of change that truly lasts is the change that comes through a relationship with Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this. It says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life is has begun. You know, one thing that we celebrate at Bridgepoint is the fact that that Jesus through through his death and through his resurrection that no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter how long you've run from God, no matter how far you've run from God, that in Christ that we can have the opportunity to get a new start for our relationship to change with the God of the universe that at one time we were distant from him because of our sin, but through Christ we're, we're, brought, we're brought near. And, and so the big part of this series was not only learning that new life comes through Jesus, but really learning how to live that out. Um, what does it mean for us to, to walk in Christ? What does it mean for us to, to grow in, in our holiness and our relationship with Him? So uh, take, take a moment and ask yourself right now, um, how, have you, how have you seen your relationship with Christ change? Are, are you a person that's come to faith in Christ? this year. If that's the case, then man, just take a moment and say, Jesus, thank you for making me new. Thank you for giving me a new start. Um, and, and, and just celebrate that. And if you've been a believer maybe for a long time, how have you seen God grow you? How have you seen him change you? And as you look at your life right now, are, are there some things that you want to see him change? that as we come to 2014, are there already some areas of your life that you know that you want to see God to, to cause for you to look more and more like Jesus? Well, after our series new, uh, we did a, a series called Family Honor Code. Family Honor Code, and both uh, us and and Kid Point, we were doing this together. It was it was really incredible. The the verse that was really the focus for this series was First Samuel two thirty. It says this: God says, "I will honor those who honor me, but those who despise me will be disgraced." This five-week series was all about being a family, um, leading our families to be people that um, honor God and, and in that turn are, are honored by Him. Because none of us want, want families that fall apart. Instead, we want to be leaders uh, as, as parents and grandparents, um, as, as kids, as people that, that honor God with all that we say and do. And so um, 
here were the five big ideas from, from that series. Here are the five honor codes. A, a, a godly family, they bring their cares to God. Number two, a godly family dedicates their lives to God. Number three, a godly family worships God. Number four, a godly fa family honors God above all. And finally, a godly family listens to God and does what he says. The, the great thing about, um, about this story that we, we read from, from the Old Testament is we learned that um, a family doesn't have to be a perfect family in order to honor God because there is no such thing as a perfect family. But it is possible for us to, um, to lead our families and to lead ourselves in such a way that um, we, we receive the, the favor of God in our lives. And that's really what we want. So as you take an evaluation, not just to yourself, as you look at your family, how do you wanna see your family change and honor God in 2014? What steps are you gonna need to take to make sure that God is the priority, not only in your life, but also in the lives of your children, your grandchildren, and anybody that you have influence on? To that end, let's let's pray as we look forward, um, and let's make the steps in preparation. Um, maybe some of those great steps could just be that you make a dedication in 2014 that that your family is going to be dedicated to honoring God, that your family is going to be dedicated to um, being a part of worship week in and week out. Your family is going to be a part of of using your your gifts, being a part of a life group. What 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 steps can you take in order to live out the family? honor code. Well, after we finished family honor code, we went to a series. It was called Lost and Found. Luke 19.10 says this. It says, the son of man, speaking of Jesus, came to seek and to save the lost. A passion for us at Bridgepoint is to reach people that are far from God. And, and the series Lost and Found just took the idea that it's each of our responsibility personally to reach out to other people that don't yet know Jesus. Um, sometimes uh, the church has wrongly assumed that it's just a few people, it's their responsibility. Maybe it's the responsibility of, of just pastors like me to share the gospel with people so they come to faith in Jesus. But this series really was about equipping and inspiring each and every person that if you know Jesus, that just as Jesus came to seek and save the lost, that he has given us that same calling and that same passion. And I just want to give testimony to this, that as we look back, we, we've seen 30 people, over 30 people come to faith in Christ this year, both um, adults and teenagers and, and children. And I believe that the reason that's happened is because there are people that really bought onto this truth, that it's our responsibility to seek and save the lost. Maybe you just invested in someone's life um, by forming a relationship with them. Maybe you just extended an invitation. Maybe you had long conversations through the night explaining who Jesus is and what he's done. Whatever, whatever way that, that God used you, um, you were a part of helping to seek and save the lost. And because of that, um, we saw our church grow. We saw people's uh, experience new life in Jesus, and that's amazing. I hope that that continues on in 2014. Who is it in your in your life that uh, that you want to see come to know Jesus? If you've walked, if you visit our church before, you'll notice that there are some doors that have people's names on it. Um, and and at the very end of our series, Lost and Found, what we did is we we were talking about how God often opens the door. For, for us to have opportunities to share um, the good news of Jesus. And we asked people to do two things. Number one, to write their own names, that God would open the door for us in our lives to share the gospel, but also that God would open the door in the lives of people that were yet to know him. And I, I was looking at those doors just the other day, and I noticed that some people had come by and started putting check marks beside people's names. And what that signified is that God had opened doors and that people's lives had been changed. I wanna see more of that in 2014. I hope that you wanna see more of that in 2014 as we continue to seek and save the lost and build relationships with people that are far from him. The, the next series, um, and, and Daniel mentioned this recently in, in his testimony, was the series, I Am Generous. It was a study on 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 about what it means to be people that are generous. And that, to say, I am generous, the hope is that the truth is sometimes the reality is that we haven't always been generous, that we haven't been people that reflected that same generosity of God. But I know that deep down we want to be. We want to be able to say, I am generous. 
2 Corinthians 9, 6 says this. It says, The person who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the person who sows generously will also reap generously. I, I've just got to say that in, in our church, um, there have been people that have sowed generously. And because they've so generously, we've, we've seen that kingdom impact. The reason that we were able to fully fund people to go to Uganda and see hundreds of people, get this, hundreds of people come to faith in Christ is because people invested. They chose to invest and to sow their seed generously. The reason that we were able to, to impact kids is because people gave generously. The reason we're able to reach out into our community and be involved and, and, and be generous to um, give of our, our of ourselves and our resources is because people have learned this truth that I am generous. As you look at at 2014 and even as the, the end of 2013, how has your investment been in the kingdom of God? Um, have you been characterized by generous giving? And my encouragement to be would be to you. Maybe you've never contributed financially to to Bridgepoint Church. Maybe your next step is just to make a one-time contribution to say, God, um, I, I'm not yet there yet, but I want to give something. I want to I want to partner. Uh, maybe you're a person that already gives regularly. And, and maybe the next step for you in 2014 would be to, um, to, to go above and beyond, to say, God, I'm going to move out of my comfort zone because I believe that when you generously invest that there's a generous blessing that comes back to us. And you know, that blessing doesn't mean all of a sudden you're going to get rich, but it does mean that you're going to be richly blessed as you see God working through the way that you give. Um, and so... How are you going to invest in 2014? Are you going to make being generous a priority as we work together to see the kingdom um, be expanded, not only in Gloucester, um, not only in Virginia, not only in the United States, but throughout the world? I hope that you'll plan to do that. Well, after, uh, after we did the series, I Am Generous, we came to a series called Game Time. Now, I have to admit, I was super pumped about, about this series because... Well, it was themed on football. I absolutely love football. And the idea behind this was life is a team sport. Um, we, we learned the truth that we can't do life alone, that life is better together. And uh, w one of the many passages we looked at was Ecclesiastes 4. Ecclesiastes 4 says two are better than one. It continues on giving some reasons why. And we learned all kinds of reasons why two are better, better than one and why three are even better. Um, we, we learned that as we, as we um, encounter trials within our life, that we need people that can help pick us up when we hit the red zone of our life. Uh, we, we learned that we, as a church, can do more together than we can alone. We choose to serve together. Uh, and when we choose to gather and discuss God's Word in life groups, there's all kinds of applications to, to this series. And so, um, have you made being in community with other people a priority in, in this past year? And are you going to make it a priority in 2014? I already encouraged you a little earlier to, to get involved in a life group. Maybe for some reason you haven't been able to. Your schedule's just crazy. That doesn't mean that you, can't, you don't need to be in community. Uh, even if you just find a couple of people that you can gather with to, to, to grow with, to discuss God's Word. So people that um, you can be a shoulder for them to lean on, and you can have a shoulder to lean on um, because you don't know what's going to happen in 2014. You don't know what trials you're going to encounter. You don't know what um, the good things, the bad things. But I do know this, that when you have other people in your life that are there to support you, to be with you, um, God can do amazing, amazing things. Well, after, after our series Game Time, we have two more series that we did. Um, the next one was called Afterlife, and we were asking the question, what happens when you die? That sounds like a more big question, but the big idea for that whole series was this, life is short, death is certain, but the afterlife is forever. And even though death is not something we like to think about, Scripture clearly proclaims that, that death is something that all of us are going to experience unless Jesus comes back. Um, that we're all going to face death and we're going to face our maker and, and that the afterlife is going to last forever. There truly is, uh, is hell. There truly is heaven. And, and this series for me, it brings about the seriousness of, of the decisions that we make right now. Um, 
what, what's your relationship with Jesus like? Do, do you know him? Because that's going to matter for eternity. How are you using your time and your, your energy and your thoughts right now? Because that matters for eternity. Are you laying up treasures here on earth? Or are you laying up treasures ahead? Now, one of the exciting things to me, um, and it was uh, one of the first times we have done this, we did a big Q&A series and you guys were awesome in responding and asking questions and giving us the opportunity to to really answer the questions that are on your mind and as we look forward to 2014 we're already thinking of some other ways that we can engage in the same way uh, of being able to hear from you hearing what's on your heart and so i'll even just give you an open opportunity right now maybe there's a question from the scripture Maybe there's um, something that you've read you haven't understood and you've always wanted to be able to engage in, in, uh, in having an answer to it. You can email us. You can email us at hello at bridgepoint.cc and tell us your question. Who knows? Maybe it'll be a question that we can answer uh, during one of our series as we're, as we're planning. So just an open opportunity to you. Um, and, and that's an open opportunity, not just now, but throughout the year. If we can serve you in any way and help you to engage in God's word, answer the questions you have, we want to be able to do that. Well, we finished out the year um, just uh, just a couple of uh, just a, a week or so ago with a series called "The Songs of Christmas," and we wanted it to be a, a time of joy. Um, Christmas is a time of celebrating. It's a time when people sing and there's Christmas songs. And so we took uh, the big ideas from a number of songs and we showed how they're grounded within within the scripture. Um, creatively, I thought it was it was incredible as we, we did songs like Little Drummer Boy and O Come, O Come, um, Emmanuel. And my hope from that series is that the joy of Christmas truly would have filled your hearts, um, that the joy of knowing Jesus and celebrating him would would put a song on your lips and a song within your heart well that closed out basically 2014 that's a whole lot of teaching that's a whole lot of truths and i hope that you have been impacted and as we began with i hope that it could be true just as in third john he writes that it brings me no greater joy than to see my children are walking in the truth I hope that you've been walking in the truth in 2013. Well, as we get ready to come into 2014, um, you know, you're having this online experience right now, but the very first Sunday in January, we're going to be back at the Moose Lodge at, at 11 o'clock, and we're going to be kicking off a brand new series called First. So if you would, just take a moment, and we're going to show you a little video about First. Guys, I'm super excited about, about this series first. It's all about seeking first the kingdom of God. But what does that mean? How do you actually seek first the kingdom of God? So through the month of January, we're going to be talking about how to put God as a priority in our life, how to start the new year right by making sure that God is first, that God is first in our, in our decisions, that God is first in our finances, that God is first in our day. And you're going to be able to walk away with some really practical, uh, ways that you can honor God throughout this year and to put him first. Thanks for joining us today for our online worship experience. If you've been blessed by the ministry of Bridgepoint Church and would like to partner with us in our mission of connecting people to new life in Jesus, then you can give financially by following the giving link online. Finally, we hope that you make plans to join us the first Sunday in January as we begin a new series called First. Yeah, can we start over? Yeah. I'll press it right now on your Just computer. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I was like, what is the first line? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Shut up. Ready? Here we go. And would like to partner with us.
I'd like to. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> me, me, my friend. And my <laughs> That's why I couldn't get through it. Because I'm right. Sorry, sorry, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have a little fun when you're recording stuff. Because if not, it's like. Happy New Year.